What's up, Facebook? Hey, hey. Uh, we are here at the Arthur TP. I've just decided to dub it that. I'm sure we've called it that once before. Mm. It's the Arthur Community House has had many names over the past 30 years now. Yep. Yep. So that's where we're at. We're making some food. I'm talking about nutrition, agriculture, compost, backyard vibes, grass, how to not kill your grass, how to kill your weeds while not killing your grass. I'll tell that story maybe later. That was a funny one. <laughs> he loves that one. It's his favorite. Um, we're going to be making some gluten-free super pizzas. His favorite. He loves these things. He makes them all the time. Um, I haven't yet mastered the art, so we're going to watch. I'm going to learn. I'm going to take notes, see if I can master that today, and hopefully we can do that. So let's check it out. Let's get into it. What's up, Dr. G? Hey, hey, hey. I, I call this the seven-minute gluten-free pizza. It's pretty darn simple. All you need is a griddle. Let me take you through the ingredients real quick, show you how fast it is to make it. It's super easy, super fun. And I got some new scruff. I, I left my, uh, oh wow, weird looking, huh? <laughs> but uh, I left my uh, razor uh, behind when I went to Mexico surfing a weekend ago. And uh, my wife said, just let it grow. I said, okay, what the heck, you know, we'll give it a try. All right, so here's, let's go through some ingredients real quick. Switching the video. We're gonna take it, we're gonna use an organic brown rice tortilla. We get most of this stuff at Trader Joe's, um, Costco, Mother's, Whole Foods. We always try to look for the bargain stuff, but everything's organic we're using here today. We got this, we got organic Trader Joe's tomato paste. We got organic fresh basil from Trader Joe's. We got organic um, little mini peppers, sweet mini peppers. We got some organic tomatoes. We also have organic Applegate uh, turkey breast. Now you can use anything else. We even have these um, organic grass-fed hot dogs that you can use too. Um, I would usually cut these up in little slices and put them in a grill with a little, um, little bit of olive oil and then those can be spaced out. So you can use whatever kind of protein source you want. You usually want a good protein source as well. I already sliced and diced the uh, turkey and the simple way to do this, you can either use the Trader Joe's marinara sauce or if you want to go even more um, low cost, you can take a basic tortilla like this. Let's just stick it on the grill. We're going to take some olive. What's that? There we go. Alright. So we got that on here. I'm not going to turn the I'm not going to turn the um, the heat on yet. I'm just going to take the tomato paste, stretch it out, get a get one of these. It'll work better. I love a pizza. Stretch it out on so, so there. So while you're doing that, tell me about like the organic thing. You're a lot of the things that you just say that you you buy at uh, grocery stores and stuff are all organic. Everything that you just listed off that are going to be on the pizza over here, everything had the adjective organic before the noun. Of well, the loose the loose um, reality is is organic means it has carbon molecules, but the way that um, they've put it together, organic means that it doesn't use um, chemical pesticides and fertilizers. Again, you have to kind of look at it because there are some things that are even just recently found in Whole Foods that weren't organic that said organic. You try to do the best you can, people. It's a toxic world out there and try to get um, organic whenever possible and some of it remains to be seen how organic it really is. So Why is that important to, to try and have organic? What's, well, what's the downside of we pesticides? Have such, and... We have such a toxic environment. This is one of my favorite seasonings. Trader Joe's everyday seasoning. I use it on everything. It's phenomenal. Um, there are so many toxins are in our environment and you know the cancer and inflammation and heart disease have continually continued to rise as well as autoimmunity which we talked about last time and the reality is is we want to try to decrease the amount of toxicity that our bodies are exposed to oh my gosh this is organic too organic italian seasoning right there I just take this, I put the the, uh, the everyday seasoning on. Now I'm gonna take a bunch of this. Let's let's make it pour a little faster here. So this is your little your Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting all excited. Easy there. boy, easy boy, all right. <laughs> I don't mind a little spice. I don't mind a little being a little spicy. So this is your dough? Yeah, this is but my it's pizza actually dough. not dough. It's yeah. what? 
it is the brown rice tortilla. Brown rice tortilla. Now, one of the things I'm especially fond of is fennel seeds. Why? Because fennel seeds just get this Italian sausage kind of flavor, which makes it a really nice, if you know what I mean. You know, Italian guy told me before I went to Italy, he said one of the, the best sayings in Italy is, vive bene, mangia bene, la bella ragazza, la dolce vita, grazie a Dio. Now, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> well, vive bene means live well, mangia bene means eat well, la bella ragazza means the beautiful woman. I mean, where would we be without beautiful women? So inspired. And the sweet life is la dolce vita and grazia dio means thank you god so uh i pull that off when i go to italian restaurants sometimes and act like i actually know how to speak italian but that one always goes over well brings a smile to the face of the people who do speak italian put all that back up in there now we are ready to take this this is a mandolin this thing is beautiful um you, you don't have to go this extensive with it but mandolin makes cooking really fast and easy. Ozzy, what do you think about a mandolin? Yeah. You like it? Uh, it does it spill stuff on the ground so I could eat it? All right. Whoa, so whoa, whoa, what the heck was that? This is, well, this is the uh, yellow pepper, sweet pepper. Oh. And what we're doing here is we're just going to... Slice. Slicey dicey. Look at the Arthur cooking show we're doing right now. Mm. Nice. Boom, done. Now these little jewels are going to go right on the pizza. Pepper jewels? Yep. And we spread those things out. Nicely. It's all about presentation and flavor, right? Okay, good. We're looking good. Now Raya has already blended the cheese up. Stick a couple tomatoes on here. Let's just do the uh, presentation again. The knife is over here. I do love cooking, but I will tell you that sometimes you got to be careful. When I'm cooking in the kitchen with my wife, a lot of times that she may want to think that there's, well, not that she may want to, she does think that it should be done quite differently than how I'm doing it. So that's okay, you know, we have we have a right to disagree, and so I just pretty much, if I'm gonna cook with her, I just have to determine that she's the boss, and if I wanna work on it, whatever she says is the best way to do it. All right, that's 35 years of being married. So, then other times I just invariably I say, honey, I'm cooking, and why don't you just go sit down and, and relax, and I'll prepare the meal and serve you. And she always likes what I cook, so I can't be doing things that, that crazy wrong. All right. Honey, if you're listening, you, you know it's true. Okay. Our first knockdown drag out fight that we had in our first year of marriage was in the kitchen over how I was preparing sauce or something. I don't know. And I kind of took offense to it because I knew it tasted good, but, you know, oh well. You live and learn. You work it out with each other. Okay, we are now ready for the cheese. The griddle's going on. Not full blast. I'm going to turn it down a little bit so it heats it from there. Now this is organic manchego, which is um, from sheep. Do we have a thing of manchego in here? No. There we go. Well, oh, this oh. is the purple edge on it. It doesn't actually say it, but it's manchego. Good cheese. We get that, I think, from Trader Joe's. Or That's manchego and cheddar in there. Costco. Okay. This is manchego and a little um, organic cheddar. So we're sticking that on there. And then I'm going to cover it up. I wish you were here to eat some of this with us because it's pretty darn good and it's gluten-free. Gluten-free crusts, if you order gluten-free pizza, every every restaurant now that cooks pizza pretty, pretty much has gluten-free crust. Just ask for it to be well done because sometimes it can be a little soggy. So we're on. This isn't going to take long. Many, many people are quite curious about the gluten-free thing. We've talked about it every once in a while. 
But what's up with gluten and why are you gluten free and isn't it just a fad or scam or? Well, there are blood tests that can be taken to determine if you have a gluten sensitivity or not. Cyrex Laboratories um, does a gluten sensitivity test. They test 24 different kinds of gluten related molecules. Most doctors only test two things called, one is called gliadin, the second is called transglutaminase. Both of those, when I had them tested, they came back normal. So I didn't think I had a gluten sensitivity. But when I did this Cyrex test, I found out of the 24, I had 11 positive gluten reactive um, molecules, immunoglobulin reactions. So uh, therefore I knew I was, and I also found that I had developed a autoimmunity where my body was attacking my own cells. And it's been proven in the literature that gluten will make that worse. So if you do have autoimmunity, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, MS, um, the list goes on and on. Hashimoto's, uh, which is low thyroid. Um, so you should be gluten free and you should get the other test done to find out if other, t other foods are making you be more um, reactive and making your immune system attack your own tissue. So if you don't have an autoimmunity, and what is gluten doing to your body? Well, gluten, because so many of these um, wheat products now are, are hybrids, they're unnatural for the body to recognize because they've, they've hybridized it and made it so it's a very unnatural substance. And a lot of times the body doesn't know how to really handle it or process it correctly. So that can lead, that can lead to inflammation. And inflammation... So gluten can cause inflammation in the body? Yes, if you're susceptible to it. Now kinesiologically you can test some of these things and see if, um, if you show a response to doing applied kinesiology testing, um, or you can get, you can get uh, blood tests done. There's a lot of different ways to, to tell, or you can get the scratch tests. So we're well, we're well, well stocked. No one's ever, you know, accused me of being undernourished. I think everybody knows that. So anyhow, that's okay. That's okay. How's your pizza looking? My pizza's coming right along. And we are, we're on schedule to have that pizza made. How far are we into the show right now, Ryan? Hey, people! <laughs> Lunch with the dog! Yeah, yeah, yeah! I had to join you guys. <laughs> Here we are. Six minute, wait, two minute? Uh, I said a seven minute pizza. Oh, seven minute pizza. How far in are we? I don't know. I don't have a time. Oh, okay, timer. Thing. I think we're pretty good. We're like. This thing is almost done. That's how fast it cooks up. We're going to give it about two minutes. I like to see the red sauce kind of bubble up through the cheese mm, a little bit. Yes. Got I like to turn it down so you don't burn the bottom. Don't burn the bottom. Kind of like a volcano. Yeah. yeah. A little bubbling up. I did that. Yep. Third grade, you know, you make your own little volcano. Mm -hmm. That was a fun project. Like that. <laughs> and then, let me show you something fun here. Any of the scraps. Fun. Watch this. This is a kitchen scrap. Right here. All right? This is a compost holder. And where's the... Uh, it usually has this little um, black... Um, like a screen in here that keeps the fruit flies and uh, that stuff from coming in. It's probably getting washed right now. So we take our coffee grinds Ooh. from this morning. We have um, organic coffee and um, and even paper goods and all of the fruit stuff. Everything goes in there and then we're going to take it down and show you how to have your plants have less bugs. You won't need chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. If you uh, use a compost, it has lots of worms in it. And in those worm castings, um, are enzymes that help to make your plants super, super healthy and resistive to um, bugs. I talked to a woman that used to be down at the farmer's market. She used to be back in the corner. She sold worms, she sold worm castings, and she sold cheese. And she's the one who really got me going on this. She said, if you have white flies and you want to get rid of white flies, what you do is you start taking up your compost and you start putting the compost after it's cooked well, you start putting that compost in to the base of the trees and those enzymes come into the plant and make it super strong. And when the, the insects are flying over, they can see like, a, like almost a radar or night vision 
they can see which plants are, their energy is low and which plants are strong and vital. They wow. know the strong and vital ones um, are going to be the ones susceptible that they can live on and get hosted. They're kind of like parasites. They just land on a plant and eat the plant up. But the ones that have this natural um, enzyme from the worm castings are really strong and they don't have a tendency for leaf mold or anything else. How are we doing over here? Hey, get a look at this. Get a look. Ooh, ooh, ooh I think we're looking good. Bam, let's let's lift that up first. Bam. Oh, I think, I think we're good. Woo. We're good. We are good. <laughs> okay. We are. Ready for the pizza? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you need your? Uh, yeah. Uh, I I need my cutting board. Cutting board. Oh. Yep. Oh. Don't stop cutting board. No stop. So if you just joined us, we're making gluten-free pizzas with Dr. G and Miss Maria. Quick. And it is so fun. So fun. Getting down, getting groovy, getting cuisine-esque in here with little red mm. peppers, little um. Yeah, um, give us give tomatoes. us the rundown again about what's in there. All right, we got golden bell peppers. We have uh, organic um, Roma or cherry tomatoes. We have fresh basil. Mm -hmm. We have organic turkey breast. We have Italian seasoning, fennel seeds, and everyday seasoning, and some organic tomato paste and a tortilla, a rice tortilla. Wow. And you gotta have one of these because these are a lot of fun. Wow. I'll just take Who says gluten free, free can be way. good? I mean, gluten free can be. I was just having Dad. I was just having Dr. G explain the whole gluten-free thing. Yes. Because I know a lot of people think it's funny and make fun of it and don't think it's legit. I've gotten that before, you know. Oh really? That's so weird. Yeah, it is weird. You know, gluten-free? Really? Oh. Oh, you're trendy. Trendy. So I actually had I actually had the doctor explain the science behind it. The science behind the gluten-free. Thank you, but I think it's uh, I think it's well warranted. Most of the time, people who are gluten free don't really know the science behind it. Don't know why they're gluten free. Yes. Don't know what gluten actually does to the body, and so it's good to have a scientific perspective. It is. Here's for you, son. The the incredible the photographer that you are. Here's for you, oh, my daughter. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, let me buy you lunch today, okay? Wow, that's right. so sweet. How kind. Lunch oh, with the we dog. Go. Mm. Here we go. Quick, easy. Quick and easy. Catherine Winders. Yes! Catherine, we love you. We miss you. Oh, you're the best. All right. You had our cauliflower pizza. Okay, so a longer version of this pizza takes a while, you but, fork. but a cauliflower pizza. You make the crust out of cauliflower rice, goat cheese, and eggs, and it makes this like amazing crust, and you add all these veggies and it is really good. You mean so, like this organic cauliflower rice? Yes. That's, that's what you make the crust right out there. of. Again with the organic, man. Yeah. Everything you say. Yeah, pretty much. Organic. So actually. How's the pizza? Oh, Phenomenal. Turn around on yourself there. How's it? Mmm. <laughs> it's good. Alright, let's go out. Now, my mm. wife says, would you please bring the napkins? Okay, I will. Okay. Okay, sure. One, two. So I'm going to tell you about our little event that we're having tomorrow night as we walk outside. Beautifully Fit and Free. We're doing an amazing women's event. Roots Beauty is going to be with us, and we're talking all about beauty, natural beauty products. We're talking about fitness and really good nutrition to help recover from exercise. And then recovery, injury recovery, to keep yourself free to do the things you love. So, if you're free tomorrow night at 6.30, come down to Health and Balance for... Sit over there, Mom. Sit over here, Mom. Okay, I'll sit over here. Oh, yeah. So, what time does that start? That's at 6.30 tomorrow night. And what's the address? 380 Glenary Street, Suite G. It's in our therapy area. Oh, it's downstairs. It's downstairs. It's going to be... Behind Troy Lee and North. Mm-hmm. This is good. So good. Love it. Mm. Oh, yeah. This one's really good. All the veggies. I love it. Something about those fennel seeds. Just, uh... Oh, there we go. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Are you working over here, you guys? There we go. We're back. We're back. Can you use cell Connection. Is fine. I can. It's not the best here. Well, well, when we go down to show you the con 
Mm. Yeah. All right. Let's go down to the compost. We're going to go down to the compost as we eat and tell you a little bit about our trees and our gardening. My chore a couple weeks ago was to put all that nice little mm. compost that's gotten all mm. together under the trees so you're going to see my work. You know, it's very nice. And Dad will tell you about all the good, amazing composty things. Ka just... Catherine said she loves your cauliflower pizza. Oh. And love hearing Dr. G eat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Catherine, you know a lot about that cauliflower I'm a motor. pizza. <laughs> so darn good. So is Catherine. She's a motor. Mm. This is our outdoor shower. We especially love to come home from the beach, just take an outdoor shower, let the water run. We only use organic soaps and shampoos, of course. Let the water run down here. Um, it runs down. This is our pomegranate tree. And our, our original pomegranate tree got too heavy on one side and it cracked over. So we talked to Hendy. And um, he, uh, he said, you know what, we'll just let some new sprouts grow and choose the strongest ones and you'll have another tree again. So it's actually growing back. We're going to have good fruit this year. Mm -hmm. So we have two pomegranate trees here. Oh, look over here. Surprise, mm. surprise. We don't have to buy basil surprise, anymore. Surprise, surprise. So we have all of our basil growing over here. We've got the compost in the garden. We've got, um, we've got green, uh, um, Chives? Chives, thyme, basil, and what's that stuff again? Mm. We used it just last night. Uh, dill. Oh, dill, yeah. Dill. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's our little herb garden herb there. Garden. My son actually put these racks up for all our surfboards and we keep a curtain on them so they don't bake in the sunshine. That's not good for the the foam or the the uh, fiberglass. Mm -hmm. Isn't it gorgeous? Everything is, is Olivia here today? blooming. Yeah. Oh, good. Hey, you want to say hi to the Facebook Live crowd? Be on TV? <laughs> not really. <laughs> Where are you? Right here. Okay. Raya's Raya's filming. Mm -hmm. All right. What's up? What's up with all of our fruit trees? What kind of fruit trees you got? Well, over here we have Valencia orange, and it is totally in full bloom right now. We're gonna have so many. Look at those blossoms! Oh. Yeah, and they smell so they smell good. They smell so good. Mm. bloom. This These are my our... favorite oranges. I try buying oranges at the store, and it's just no, nothing compares to just fresh orange. Mm. And there's enzymes that. Like you only can get like within 20 minutes of picking it, right? Yes, and I don't know a lot about which ones those are or anything about that, but. But there's something really special about eating a fruit, an orange, straight off the tree. Just picked. So just picked. You if you ever want to come to the Arthur's and have one, you're welcome. You could probably Google that, couldn't you? Probably could. Here's a pink grapefruit. This is only a couple years old, but we like pink grapefruit too. Too, and this looks like it's going to be a good. Um, a good yield. This one's taking its sweet time, but we got a lot of compost in there. Mama Lisa's rose garden here. This is the old, the old faithful um, pomegranate tree here. Then coming down here, we got over here. We have a apricot and we have a nectarine. The Show the um, really flowers on the nectarine tree right now. Are like woo. Yeah, so beautiful. we're gonna have a good yield of apricots, and then the nectarine tree we just put it's right next to it. Flowers. And uh, so pretty. It's and this blooming. one will ripen behind the apricot, as you can see. It doesn't really. Oh, there you go. It doesn't quite do it justice. That's you know, the apricot, and this is a nectarine. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at those little guys. Oh, those are wait. This one's oh, apricot. Yeah, this is a nectarine. Oh okay. Yes. This is a champagne peach right here, and it's. Got you mean they're alcoholic? Well, they're white white meat peach. <laughs> um, they call it champagne peach. Now we used to have leaf mold on this real bad, and a couple years of putting the compost at the base has made this tree so strong that the leaf mold has completely gone away this year. So and if you do get leaf mold, you want to pick those things off as soon as you can, and don't stick those in the compost. Stick those in the trash and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Just take a little bucket, and any of the ones that have leaf mold on them, just pull them off and stick them in the trash. So the champagne peach, is that false advertising because you won't get buzzed if you eat one? Mm, 
Mm. Yeah, you won't get buzzed if you eat one. Oh, what? Yeah. Dang. I think that's what most people want to know. Well, yeah. yeah, but mama, tell mom, tell about mom. Unless you make kombucha with it. Oh. Is that what you're talking about? No, I was talking about oh. her the dessert that she makes with the peaches when they oh, come in full. Oh, peach on. cobbler? Mm. Well, not Evan, fermented. Not fermented. Not that one, but you could probably ferment it. You could probably do your own kombucha booch craft with the peaches. That would be good. But we mm. make a peach cobbler every summer. It's like these things come in for like three weeks pretty strong. And then, you know, it, it lasts longer. But there's like three weeks where it's like, okay, we have a lot of peaches. We got to use these up. So we just cut them all up, make a peach cobbler with like an amazing crust, gluten-free oats and nuts. And, oh, it's just nothing says summer like a peach cobbler from How your own peach it? tree. With, um, I think we do maple syrup. Sucanon. Sucanon. And maple syrup. Yes. Sucanon is a, a sweetener that doesn't spike your insulin, so even diabetics can have it. And it's just pure sugarcane juice that they evaporate, and then it has all of the minerals in it, and uh, it's super tasty. It's kind of like brown sugar, but it uh, doesn't cause that big spike in your carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, come so on, let's good. go down here. Now that we've already eaten the pizza, that, those two little pieces, I mean, I would usually have my <laughs> own my own little pizza, but we had we were down to one tortilla. All right, this this tree here is a beer's lime. Now the the lime. Look wait, at wait, that. wait, wait, wait. You it's, have a champagne peach <laughs> and a, and a beer's, beer's lime. lime. Well, good, good point. Whoa, what? I'm not sure what that says, except that okay. Okay. We like it that way. All right, so this is a beer's lime. It's a South African version of a lime. It looks just like a lemon. It turns yellow when it's ripe. But it's so good. It's a little bit sweeter than the little green um, limes. It's uh, really a nice lime. Do people get confused? Uh, yes, they mm -hmm. think it's they think it's a lemon. Yeah. So we come out here. Wait. Okay. Can... So you call it a, a beer's lime. B a e r s. And, and then it looks like a lemon at the same time. Yes. yes. So there's all sorts of confusing things. There's all. Yeah. Very confusing. Quite. <laughs> But Over not. Here, we just have an original Valencia. Um, this one was here when we bought the house in '93. Um, mm -hmm. It hasn't grown much at all over all those years. And the two pomegranates were here. The rest of the trees we put in ourselves. So I really wish that you could just smell through the camera because you all need to really smell those little blossoms, but you can't. So it's this, okay. This is a beer's lime. That's a beer's lime right there. And it is so tasty. I use a half of one of those in about a quart of water, and I drink um, that during the day, and especially first thing in the morning, it's good to cleanse your liver. Um, take like a half a lime or half a lemon, put it in a tall glass of water, drink that down first thing before you have any coffee or tea. It's, it stimulates your gallbladder, it gets your liver to cleanse and detoxify, really good for you. If you had a little too much to drink last night, or if you didn't, it doesn't matter, but it is really good to keep your um, liver clean. Yes. Over here now, this is the champagne peach, but this is called a Myers Improved Lemon. Ooh, now, now these Myers, ones are actually lemons. These are lemons. <laughs> they look similar, but the Myers Improved Lemon is a sweeter lemon mm. as well, and it's really, really juicy. Uh, it has a thinner skin, so it's not the real thick skin. But if you're going to go out and buy any fruit trees and do composting like we suggest, mm -hmm. um, the Myers Improved is the lemon tree I would get. Um, the beer's lime um, and the champagne peach. Uh, I mean, just talk to, I would go talk to Ruben at Laguna Nursery. Um, he knows plants inside and out. He can tell you which ones would be best for our climate. Now, mm. this is a navel orange here, and then we got mm -hmm. a big navel getting ready to navel. ripen here. Wait, so you have a different type of orange tree? Yeah, this is a Three navel types. Orange. What? Yep. Wait, what type? There's the... Well, this is a different brand of Valencia than that one. So, yes, I would say... Two Valencias. Three, two Valencia and a and navel. navel. Mm -hmm. One beer's lime, one Myers Improved lemon, one peach, one apricot, one nectarine, two pomegranates. So the Navy, now, like, genetically inter fruit. engineered this one? Um, mm -hmm. What do you mean, the navel? Oh! <laughs> You're funny, boy. Oh, my gosh. All right, you got to see my job of putting the compost under here. So you can just tell that this nice, rich soil is where the compost has all gone in. You can see some of the little composty stuff. So you just dig out the other, the other dirt and then put the compost on there. All right, now we're going down to the lower yard. 
and uh, we always got to make sure we watch for where the dog has been. Yes. Uh, that's one of my least favorite things to do. What what is what's this over there? Well, oh, this is Mama Lisa's. Um, this is not. Those are um. Starts with an S, and ends with a chard. Yes. <laughs> Swiss, Swiss chard. chard. Yeah. <laughs> Swiss chard. Mama Lisa's uh, organic lettuce. You got two types of lettuce. I think that's butter lettuce, and that one I don't know is some sort of a romaine. What are these, Mo? Well, one of them is chives again, and then one of them. It's got tomatoes. I don't know what these are. Mama Lisa, watch out over here! Watch out over here! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Mama Lisa does not like axe throwing when this is in, you know, in its infancy. So, yeah. if you come over and throw tomahawks, don't throw them here at this stage of the year. We'll use the other target. Now, over here, we got Haas avocados, and look at Haas. how many. How many uh, flowers and bugs are on here? This is going to be a big year. Ooh. I planted two trees together so they would cross pollinate each other. That's smart. Yeah, this one's good. And then we got some coffee plants there. We're going to put um, coffee plants underneath the tree because they like shade. Where'd you get those coffee plants? I got those from Dave Day, Growers First. He has a, a company that helps um, indigenous farmers in Central America and Mexico to get fair market trade value for their product. It's good, good company. We did a, a fundraiser in our backyard here, played music, had about 150 people in here and had a good time. Hopefully you guys will come to one of our festivities that we have in the backyard at some point in time. Um, and then let's go to the compost pile. Many times it's like, hey Mo, can you bring the compost down to the compost pile? And it's like nighttime. Like, ooh, there's I don't skunks. Really want yeah, there's skunks raccoons, down here, raccoons, weird noises. Possums, rats. I'm just an innocent little girl, and I just don't know if I want to <laughs> walk all the way down to that compost pile. And put it in. But then I do. And who's, I'm who's, fine. That, who's that guy? Well, you named him Glendale because it's the Glendale, Glendale Company, but we do a little target practice with some uh, arrow shooting and stuff like that here. And we have uh, hay bales behind there for arrows and spears. And then our tomahawks go over here on the other side. Now this is the compost world. Come compost over here. world. Here we are. This compost here. So the gardeners know not to put the grass cuttings and the leaves the, if there's a, a log on top of this one, this means this one's ready to go and don't add fresh cuttings. And if they do add fresh cuttings, then I call the gardener up. Like, oh, look at that. Look like at fresh that. hair cuttings? What are you talking about, cuttings? Well, yeah, cuttings from the plants, like leaves, haircuts? Oh, plants. dog hair, oh. human hair. Um, <laughs> actually, it's even good if you're frequenting um, our yard, if you have your own compost. Peeing on your own compost is actually good, too. It's really good for it. So you put your grass yeah I'll, I'll go I'll get to that one this one's okay. ready to go though and this one's already cooked watch this we're gonna get down in here and you're gonna see it's just teeming oh yeah with worms worms and um, roly-poly olies love roly-poly olies and it's filled with with the uh, worm castings And you, sometimes you'll get into like a uh, a worm orgy, and they're just all over each other and going crazy. So if you just there's join a, yeah, us, what are we doing? There's a bunch of worms right here. So this would be the stuff that you would worms, worms. Wow, worms. So this would be the stuff now that's already cooked that you plant, uh, put along the sides of all your plants, which keeps them resistant to bugs, and you don't have to use a bunch of sprays and toxic. Um, stuff like that. This stuff is amazing it, how well it works. And then let's go over here to this one. This one's the fresh one that you add all your grass cuttings and all your table cuttings. Let's take, take that. The gardeners were here. Come so, on over here. Fresh compost. Put it in. Add it all in there. And now every week or so I'll come out here with my stick and then take and turn it because as summertime gets going you're going to have all this fresh 
grass, but you want to get it mixed in as soon as possible. And we're due for some new ones because this is where vermin, they, they like to get in here and eat stuff. Vermin have, have recently chewed a hole there and they'll get in there uh -oh. and, and feed. Stupid vermin. So how long does it take for this one, like this, with fresh stuff to look like that? Well, when it gets to the top, and I keep on turning it, when it gets up here, then I'll take all the contents of here, spread it out all over my yard, front yard, around all the trees, and then this one will cook. Once I've turned it, I don't have to keep on turning it. It's, it's already done, it's cooked, it's ready to go. Then this one will be... This one will be probably ready by fall. Okay. This one will be ready by fall. We'll use this one until then. So you usually get one every six months. Yeah, or about so. one every six months. And then what I do is to um, take the worms as kind of a farm. Let's say this one was empty and I was just starting. I would put, I'd take some of the old compost in, which is filled with worms, stick it in there, and then turn it with the new cuttings. And then those worms start to populate in here too. So once you buy your initial dose of worms, then you don't have to keep doing it. Mm. And there are, I was just talking to Joe Allen today, one of my friends, and she was talking about how she actually does the worm hotels where they're like three level worm hotels hotel. where the, the worms are here, they put the cuttings in, and then all the worm castings or the worm poop goes through these little filter levels and then they have this fine silt of worm castings but if you want to get a start on getting your plants better and you don't have a compost going go to the um, go to the uh, the nursery and buy bags of worm uh, worm castings I think it's something like worm gold I think it's what it's called and but that's all you basically do worm goals I think it's worm gold we're a worm gold worm I was gonna gold. say goals you know <laughs> Silly. <laughs> and uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now this is going to take a little time. I'm not going to have you sit there and watch me do all this. But um, you you're kind of getting a core workout, aren't you? Yeah, oh yeah, it's great. Oh, great yeah. workout. It's a good workout. There's so many benefits to compost. I mean, come on, exercise, the nutrition, worms, food, worms. A place to go wee wee. <laughs> now we can't leave the backyard without without Ooh, a, a ceremonial tomahawk. tomahawk throw by each of us. Okay. So, here's one for you. Here's one for you, son. <laughs> all right. So it's all about the release. It's all about the release and the distance. So we're gonna say, usually when this is freshly painted, there's a red area here and that's worth three points. The yellow area is worth two and anything in the green is worth one and so we'll have competitions my wife is especially fond of this Watch out, so one throw one spin is about what you want so we want to have it come out and go bam and then a double spin is twice the distance so this is about the distance right there Nice. So that wasn't a bullseye, it was two points. Let's see what you got, girl. All right. Here, I'll take over on the filming. Raya's pretty accomplished at this. Let's see what Mo can do here. All right, Mo. Ooh, not she a, stuck not, it too. Not very uh, in the middle, but just did stick it. She stuck it. All right, that's a point. The other day, I did double. I see if you did two at once? Yeah. If I can live it up. Oh, oh nice. So he got two points too. So my son and I will come out here and, and do little competitions. First one to 10 or first one to 15, something like that. It makes it fun. And then we got, we got some uh, deer rack, uh, bighorn sheep. These were all found um, in the wilds. Actually, my buddy standing deer, his um, nephew is a Native American taos that um, takes people on hunts and they'll go and hunt um, elk with bows um, the first day and then if they don't get any with the bows and arrows and they go back the next day with a, a rifle and and it's all about balance and health and giving thanks to the great spirit and thanks to the animal for giving up its life and uh, I love eating elk meat and and good meats that are natural and give thanks to the great spirit for it like the Native Americans did so 
Mm -hmm. You got plumerias getting Give ready to come? Yeah, come over here. This is kind of a secret little nook Give of, thanks and of Laguna. Praise Look down here. This is like this. This is back in Bronwyn Lane. Brangwyn or something. It's like a little Garden of Eden. Yeah. Pretty Beautiful special little back spot. There. We used to do a lot of adventure runs back there when we were little. We thought it was like the most fun, adventurous thing we could do. Just jump over this little um, shed here, go down and run through their backyard. Like, he, we thought it was so sneaky. And then go up and around. And now I look at it, it's like super tiny. And you're like, wow, it seemed like a huge forest when I was little. But, you know, that's the cool thing about being a kid is the world is so big and amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? So, let's see, we made pizza, we talked about organic foods, mm -hmm. talked about why they're good, talked about gluten-free, mm -hmm. we talked about composting, how to start a compost pile, how to maintain one, how to keep your plants healthy so bugs don't invade them, how to not have to use chemical pesticides and fertilizers, um, and uh, talked about worms. How to throw a tomahawk. How to throw a tomahawk, and I think it's been a pretty good day. I think it's been a great day. Yeah, and we're so glad you wow. joined us lunch for this Doc. version of Lunch with the Doc. And join us next Wednesday for Lunch with the Doc again, 1230. But and think, tomorrow night. I think it's going to have to be somebody else doing it. Yes. Because I'm gone. And True. Mom, Mom's gone. True. Dr. We Dr. Jordan's going to be treating people. We will figure something out for Lunch with the Doc next week. Yeah. And tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Beautifully fit and free. Come join us 630 p.m. 6.30 p.m. at our Therapy and Wellness Suite. It's going to be an amazing night. 380 Lots Glenary. 380 Glenary. Sweet G. Sweet G. Behind Troy Lee and North mm -hmm. Men's Clothing. Yep. Dr. Lisa has amazing things to share. Roots has amazing things to share. We also have some guests coming that are in the fitness world. So lots of very valuable information. We hope you can join us. All right. Signing off. Thanks so much. And you, you are, are amazing. amazing. <laughs>